نمیدونن قلبمو نمیکنن ترجمه بکنن این اشعارو Hello. Hello. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hi, Arfan John. How are you? Hi, Ali Rizzo. How are you? <laughs> Happy to connect after so long. Hi, Ali Rizzo John. Salam. Hello. Welcome. I know. I'm going to you guys take it over from here. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah. Hello. 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 Thank you, Erfan John, for taking the time and chatting with us today. I love your angelic light behind us. <laughs> the little, yeah, the halo. Where, where are you streaming from right now? I'm far from it, but um, I'm actually from my music studio downtown Los Angeles. Okay, so you're downtown LA, uh, and I'm here in Seattle. As you can see, my mother and Peder's house. Oh, we yeah, have the TV behind me. How is your quarantine going? Quarantine's pretty good, not so bad. I, it was like, I ended up getting more sleep. I, I always try to be positive, look at the, you know, positives. And yeah. the pros were that I ended up getting more sleep, going out less, spending less money, that's for sure. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was uh, financially, everybody took a big hit and I'm, I'm always, obviously, including me. Yeah, it's crazy because you're go, 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 performing everywhere. And for an artist, quarantine hits and you're like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe now is a time where you can finally rest or end or write your amazing lyrics when it's really quiet. Are you getting that time to do that? Definitely. Well, for, in the beginning, it was tough. And I talked to my other artist friends that had the same experience. Um, it was creativity kind of died for the first month or two. And then after it started happening again, because everybody was just in a state of, you don't know what's going on. And usually... When there's some kind of pressure and some kind of hardship in life, um, after a while, things start coming out of you. You know, like for a while, you just take everything in, you process it yourself, and then, or that's how I am as a writer. I take things in, I process them, then I give them out through my own channel after once they've been processed. So, um, yeah, um, I absolutely, as a creative artist, I feel what you're saying. The first month, I was like, I, I can't be funny. I'm not writing one joke at all. Not one joke. I'm depressed right now. The world has shut down. Because the last time I saw Erfan, I met you in 2007. I want to say kind of when you were launching your career, right? Yeah, pretty much. It was after it's, my first album yeah, 13 years ago. Yeah. 13 years ago. And look how great we still look. Oh, my God. <laughs> for yourself, but yeah. 13 years ago. And you are now like the pioneer of Persian rap. You are just an inspiration to so many Iranian artists. You're at the top of the Iranian music game. You have your own record label, right? You have your own clothing line. You're a producer, you're a songwriter. You're unstoppable. Is there anything else that you don't do that well, actually, we should know? That I do mainly as a job. Actually, there are a few more things, but uh, just to say, I'm, I'm not the pioneer of Persian rap. I'm one of the pioneers, one of the first generation of Iranian rappers. Um, I'm proud of that. And also, yeah, I do all the things you mentioned. Also, to have a real estate business and I do photography. And, you know, I have the music studio, a bunch of different things. I keep busy. That's why during quarantine, I've been like working 6, 6, 6 a.m. every day to like 11 o'clock at night. Oh, okay. nonstop, you know, and, you know. That's so crazy. I had no idea you had a real estate license. Yeah, I just, yeah that's awesome. So right now when you're just not you're running in Los Angeles, it's like kind of you have to have it. Somehow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's awesome. So I want everybody to kind of, we made a montage of your work and I would love to share that with everybody. Some of his best work. Uh, if we can play the video, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'm so the magic man. Oh. 
ایرانی بودن تل اسمشه ایرانی بودن یه اسمه که از بچه گیامون تو تیوار حفظشه شیش میلیونمون بیرونی میهجرشه سنگ کوروش و داریوش و بزن به سینه بگو عرب نیستیم بزا بمونه کینه بگو حفظا سال تمدنمون اینه ولی چند خواستم همه چی رو بگم و وقت نشد به خودم گفتم افان بگو دیگه خر نشد ولی خود فهمیدی و دیدی قلبم و یادت آخرین شب خندیدی مشب ایران از ماست که بر ماست شاره ای نیست نیست بال پرواز ب- 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 برامو نقش بازی میکنن و فرمان میاد از اتاق فرمان درمان نمیاد سراغ دردان تو دستان میگیرم و زای فردان تو حلی هستی که هستی همراه حال من خوبه مال ماری مال مشروبه گای یاری گای بد خوبه جای خالی جای وقت بوده آه آره انگاه قف شدم سر جای قب یه قدم میرم جلو یه قدم عقب یه هفته است میرم تا صبح یه سر عقب تو عبده تو عبد و یک تو سامه اگه تر از اون کجاست بود و قلبم و بزروش سیا سد پایداری یاره تحریم و بشوش مثل خرج فاس میره سونی مرد و بسو آره همو تیم هم هنو یکی یکه ویسکی هم هنو بیا خنو سکه سکه تو ویترین زندگیم همه چشم من رو دوست داری خود منو آره خوب بلد بودی مادلم و بارم نخواه بیا سر سر عوضم کنی اگه من رو میخواد باید بخواد کل من رو حیف که هوری زدی به بوم بسته بازم راهی نمون برا ما جز باز گرم عشق عبدی تطیل جمعه است ما هم مثل باقی روزا باز باش باز 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 تو که در به در مجروح خسته از سفر ناچار که دل رو بسپوری به دریا باز باز تو که در به در مجروح خسته از سفر ناچار که دل رو بسپوری به دریا That gave me chills. That brought back a lot of memories. Really? Thank- yeah, yeah, for sure. Took me back on memory lane for sure. Any of those videos, uh, like one of your favorite to shoot? Um, it's hard to say. The shoots, like uh, definitely Enekas, the one with the, you know, the 360. I love that one. Um, I mean, I like all of them. I like uh, the last one with Ali Azimi, Bozoj uh, Bozfar. That's a really cool video from Kajar. The guys made it. Yeah, that's great because with um, they actually Kajart worked with Farhang Foundation. They I have heard. won several uh, awards with the Farhang Foundation Film Festival. Uh, your music videos are so dope. Like the one with the fur coat, you're just such a baller. I was, I love that one. I just yeah. love it. We shot one that one thing- uh, outside of Toronto in the middle of like it's really super cold. Really? Outside yeah. Of- Toronto's not cold enough. We went like two hours, even like farther north. And, uh- so you were somewhere really freezing, and you put that on. Yeah. That's so cool. I just, I went to the snow just because I had the jacket. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you never know where things are being filmed. So that's really cool. So that was in Canada. Mm-hmm. Did you ever film anywhere like far, like in Dubai? I did. Anacost was actually in Dubai. Montaze, the one with uh, the political one that you guys played with the green screen in my head. Uh, that one was in Dubai. The one uh, you had said with Sogan, it was partly in Dubai, but mostly in Georgia, the country. Um, I've had in Turkey, all over, all over the place. No, oh, I love that. I love that so much. And what's what I love so much about your music too, you bring in your personal experiences. You talk about politics, social justice. It's such a beautiful flavor of, of you, you know? And yeah. one, of your, one of your music videos, Holoman uh, Hube, I saw, I don't know if you guys all saw it too. It was a huge Tupac. Tattoo on his back. back sure. Now, was that real or was that fake? That's, oh, that's the real one. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Is he one? Is he your inspiration? One of your inspirations? He is. Tupac's my favorite artist, and it goes beyond that. He was a really big. Um, he's, he's he's my idol. Uh, I think his music did a lot for me growing up, as an immigrant uh, here, going to school. A lot of times at night, I would just listen to his music and get hope and get inspiration and. Belief in myself and know that, you know, there's other people really struggling. And so Tupac was a really, really big, uh, you know, he had a big impression on my life and my, what I, what I ended up doing. Yeah. And then who, who are your other inspirations? I have a lot. I mean, I have, uh, it's so funny. It's not, it's not, it's not funny actually, but most of the people that are my idols, they're all dead, you know, I don't know how that happens. Even the, yeah. the ones that aren't musicians like Anthony Bourdain, you know, but I, I love Anthony Bourdain. I, I idolize him um Tupac for sure Biggie um 
I like Mob Deep. I like the band Tool. There's a lot of like different genres of music people that. Mm -hmm. like. Yeah. And then uh, is per any Persian poets in your. Yeah, definitely. Your inspiration. Yeah. I was into poetry before I got into I mean, I was always into music, but mm -hmm. actually getting into the music industry, per se, or writing or getting into rap, uh, it came from poetry. Uh, and Khayyam is my, Omar Khayyam is my favorite Iranian poet. Yeah, I love it. And then with watching your videos, you collaborate with so many different artists. How do you choose who you want to collaborate with? Is there a process you have as an artist? Sure. I mean, I, I'm very versatile because I didn't grow up just listening to rap music. Rap's probably my favorite genre, but I love rock music. I love metal. I like uh, uh, Iranian <laughs> especially like Sonati or some of the older singers I really liked and listened to growing up. And usually it's, it's, it's through a vibe. If I connect with somebody, that's everything to me. Um, so whoever I've worked with, I kind of had a, some kind of a relationship built with them beforehand, you know, a friendship or something that I'm like, oh, I connect with this guy, we, we, we vibe, you know? And whenever I do a future with somebody or a collaboration, I did something with Hamid Nikpe and Danny Asadi last week on, and last year called Marjanga, and you see the essence of all of us in there. Like a sense of me as a rapper, Danny as a producer, Hamid Nikwe as a Talfiri or Sonnati artist, all of us are in there. You know, I don't like to just like go into a Sonnati genre and do a song. I want everybody to be uh, present in the song. So um, we just get together, we vibe, and if it happens, it happens. A lot of times there's friends that I have and we start projects that they never, you know, they never get fully executed for that reason. Yeah. So you have a connection, you vibe, you're like, oh, let's keep collaborating together. Yeah. It works. You don't want to. OK, that's cool. That makes sense. And then is there anybody that you haven't collaborated with, maybe on your wish list, who you would love to collaborate with? Yeah, I mean, I love I love Dariush. Uh, Dariush is uh, he was my, you know, one of my favorite, my favorite Persian singer growing up, especially in my teenage years. I love this music. And it's funny, last night I found a signed uh, postcard from his concert the first concert I ever went to I was like flying I was so happy to be there and to meet him was like, crazy to me and I was at 15 16 and I met him and I found a signed autograph a postcard last night um, so he definitely be on, on top of my list oh but and you've met him yes yeah yeah I've met him I've been to his I mean recently I know him, but it's, it's weird like uh I, I, I feel weird even asking him, you know? It's kind oh, of <laughs> okay. Because I was going to be like, you should have asked him. You should be like, hey, Darius John, let's Maybe I should. Out. Maybe I should. Sometimes you build something in your head and it's so big to you that you don't like, you feel even. Yeah. Yeah. You know but you, you mentioned something earlier. You, if you believe, then you do it. You achieve. Yeah. Right? You achieve it. If you believe it, you achieve it. Um, okay. So let's start in the beginning, the beginning of Air Font, because we are here to get yeah. to know you. Okay. Where were you born in Iran? I was born in Esfahan, Iran on August 3rd, 1983. My father's from Esfahan, my mo mother's from Tehran. So um, yeah, that's where it all started. Okay, and props to you for giving your age, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he straight up said 1983. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're born the same year, okay? Me and you are the same, okay? Um, so Esfahan, I'm sure there's a lot of jokes there. I'm not going to go there. Uh, but, uh, and then when did you leave Iran? Uh, I have a crazy background. I went back and forth between Iran and the U.S. my whole life. So uh, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high, and high school, all four, I was uh, in Iran and here. So I was constantly going back and forth every two to three years. Um, so, yeah. And the last what? time I came was in 1998. I didn't go back. But, uh, you know, my whole life I was going back and forth, like, co co consistently. That is crazy. So what? where were you going in uh, the United States? Where? What city were you in? Different places. I mean, I was in North Carolina for a year because my dad was doing research. But aside from that, my whole life I've, I've been in California. Uh, part of it, I was in Northern California. Um, and the rest, since 1998, in Southern California. So did it have to do with your parents? Was yeah, there something yeah. pulling you back and forth? Yeah, yeah. My did dad. you just enjoy traveling as a five-year-old? <laughs> what was <laughs> My it? dad, he's a university professor research, uh, and researcher in soil science, chemistry of the soil. So um, he came here and he went to school. He went to university, UC Davis in Northern California in 1961. So since then, he would always been going back and forth. And then he got married. Uh, things continued going back and forth. And then I was born in the process. So I kept going back and forth. And that's mm -hmm. why. 
Wow. So you have that, that attachment to Iran, the culture, you can speak it perfectly, you can write everything, and then you have everything that you learn about the American culture. So you have two sure. that you're going back and forth from. Was that a confusing childhood it for was. you? It was. I'll tell, I'll tell you a story that I think I, I, maybe I mentioned once before. I don't think people know. But when I, I moved back to Iran when I was seven years old, once I, uh, first grade, and I, I couldn't speak Farsi. I didn't know how to speak Farsi. And then, uh, so I went there and I had to learn Farsi again and a lot of that. And then I got into books. I, I started learning through books. And Sadi, the poet, his poetry is probably the most simple to understand, I'd say. Um, so I got a book for my birthday. I think I was nine years old. And so that what, is what got me into poetry and the Iranian language. And I fell in love with the, Far with the Farsi language. And, um, but it's definitely confusing. I mean, it, it was crazy going back and forth, especially going from here back to Iran. Let's say I was here for two years and I didn't have Arabic here, as you know. So I go back to Iran and then you have to like pick up after two years of not having Arabic, you know, and it was just so difficult and so confusing. Culturally, it was confusing coming here and going back. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really hard, but you did it. So you're a very smart man. How yeah. did your, um, so your dad's a professor. Yeah. Were they happy that you wanted to go into music? No. Do you even have to ask? <laughs> They're like, Erfan, John, you don't want to be a professor? You don't want to be an engineer? You're going to go sure. rap? Did they know wh what you were getting yourself into? Did they yeah. know and anything in that about the industry? Exceed him. And he's like a few levels above a PhD. He's as, like, as top as you can go, as high as you can go in the field. So for, in his head, I wanted to like do that, continue, or some kind of like education. And I was always interested in a lot of different things. And, and I, I educate myself still to this day. I love reading. Um, I love science. I like, like everything, like history. But um, anyways, I think I kind of got, got, got off track from your question. But um, it was definitely a struggle with the family from early childhood because I loved acting even before music. I loved acting and theater. So in Iran, I, I was acting. And then... Um, my dad hated it. So like, he just kind of like stopped me from doing it. I wanted to do music and I wanted to like get a guitar. He's like, no, but you have to get a sound tutor if you wanted to do the sonati, you know? And so whatever I did, it was just like, uh, I, he wouldn't let me do it, but um, I did it anyway. Cause I moved out when I was 17, just before my 18th birthday. And I just, that's when things took off. But you know, I kind of jumped far into the story, but for you to get an idea. No, that's, that's, that's it. That's what you have to do. If you have something that you believe in, your parents, it's a different generation, unfortunately. You know, they mm -hmm. wanted you to follow that path. I'm the same way. My mom wanted me to become a bikini waxer, just like her. I said, no, I said, no. Do you have other siblings? Like, did they follow you, you know? Might've been fun. I do have, I have two other siblings. Uh, I have two older brothers. Um, they're both really big influences in my life. I really looked up to them and uh, we're very close. I, a lot of this music that I, 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 li I listened to music that was much older than my age from when I was maybe like five, six years old. And that's because of my brothers. Um, so I kind of got into like deep music and what, you know, I developed that passion for music early on. Okay. So you start from acting, you listen to different music, and then you, you, you wake up one day and you're like, I want to rap, Persian rap. Well, um, it started with, like, I, I did the act, I love writing and I love poetry, right? And I love reading, right? I love literature in general. I love languages from early on. My, my brother was five years older than me when I was in like second grade and he was five years older than me and he would ask me how to spell things. I was a better speller than him and he was really good at math, you know? He's super smart, but I was just better at spelling. So I had that gift, I guess, and had that, I had it in me. And then, so I would write and I was just writing poetry in my, in my teen years. Um, and then, we as immigrants generally, uh, I think most of us learn music from, uh, learn English from music and television. So I was listening to a lot of music, a lot of rap music. So at some point, just things just clicked. Like you love writing, you love music, you love rap. Why don't you try rapping in Farsi? No one's ever done it before. So that's how things started. And I just, I think I was, it was like in my late teens, I started doing that. But um, after a few years, some of my friends were really supportive. My brother Adil and Ali, they were both very supportive. And um, and I kind of whoever wasn't supportive because there's a lot of friends who I would rap for and they'd be like, are you crazy? What are you doing rapping in Farsi? They were just like, this guy's crazy, right? Um, so I kind of put them to the side and I focused on the people who supported me and were positive about what I was doing because I knew I love it and I knew what I'm doing is right and it's gonna you know something's gonna come out of it. 
And so, you know, I did it. I kept writing and then I found a producer that I really wanted to. I wanted to have my own producer because a lot of the Iranian rappers at the time, they were um, just like kind of doing songs of like, let's say 50 Cent or Eminem songs on their beats and kind of just doing it in Farsi, right? But I wanted to do my own original music. And uh, so I found a producer and I started doing it and things just picked up really quickly. That's amazing. I love that. And you just really believed in yourself. And I really liked how you just put aside the people that don't believe in you. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't understand your passion. They don't understand that. And what's the point of just being around them? You know, did your parents finally come around when they saw that you're becoming successful and creating your own original music and getting heat? Well, I don't think my dad's ever heard any of my songs. I really don't. What? Think, yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but I don't think what? because at some point he's just um, he, he's older and um, he's, he's 85 now. So, yeah, I don't think he's ever. I mean, he knew I'm doing music and he didn't really know much about it. But, you know, he's seen my interviews on TV, things like that. And from like friends and family, people who know him, he knows I have a lot of fans. He knows, uh, you know, that I've done things, but I don't think he's heard any of my music. And my mom at some point. You know, she turned around and she's she's proud of what I do. But in her head, I know she still thinks that she's a bit of a or something. You know, like she still thinks those things in her head, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, it's it's I don't think proud is a word in our language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take parents a long time unless you're like a doctor. It's just a different path. But yeah. at the end of the day, the things that you've accomplished and are doing, it's unbelievable. As long as you're following what you're doing, it's your life. You know, it's what's Thank making you, you yeah. happy. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. That's it's so a typical path. So I can see how some people sounds like seem strange to them. And something that I always heard, like with doing whatever I wanted to do, you always hear this from people. Let's say you ask somebody, I want to get into something. I want to start doing this. They're like, oh, but there's so much competition in that. You know how some, how many people fail at doing that? I'm like, with acting, they say, with music, they say, it, realist, whatever the job is, you know? Uh, a lot of people say that. And the thing is, they don't see life through your lens. They don't see how, how you, you see it and how, how much passion you have for something and what a drive you have. Yeah, a lot of people fail at acting, but there's also a lot of crappy out, uh, actors and there's a lot of people who don't have the drive. So a lot of people who are lazy. So whatever you do, I always heard this from people, different fields that I got into. I heard this from people and I, I just kind of like, yeah, I think you're wrong. And then I found success in everything that I did because if you believe and you do the work, yeah. I, it, and is that advice that you give people yeah. that come to you? They're like, how do I get into the music industry? How do I become a rapper? Is, yeah. What type of advice do you give them? Yeah, you got to do the work. I mean, a lot of times people message me and say, like, I want to start rapping, but I don't know where to start. I'm like, it's not for you. Like, if you don't even know where to start, like, you, you know, you have to have some kind of a drive. Where do you start? Pick up a pen and start writing. I mean, that's clear to everybody, right? Um, but through that, it's just like, if you have the talent, but I tell people, artists that I meet, and I'm pretty good at picking artists and uh, know who has talent. I've done that multiple times in my career. Picked other people who became super successful artists and today in, in the Iranian music industry. So um, the advice, I mean, I always give advice about my things that I've seen about music and what I've uh, been through in the music industry and things that if I wish I had someone else tell me when I was doing it, when I started out, um, and so combination of that and just giving hope and like giving belief so they believe in themselves and also the little, uh, the little like details of how, how you succeed. And then um, if you don't know where to start, just give up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Almost like, okay, let's say like, same question, right? I want to become a designer. I don't know where to start. Start designing. Like if you ask that question, you're not meant for it. That's what I think. Yeah, I know what you mean. I love I love how you're so blunt with people. Just come <laughs> up, just start, just do it. Just pick it up. Like so if, if I came to you and I'm like, okay, Erfan, can you teach me some rap tricks? Like what do I what do I do right now? Like like so, something like let's say tomorrow I have to go on stage and do one song in a rap. What is the quickest thing that you can tell me so I can get into the perfect shape to do a rap? What like let's what do I do? Number one tip right now, two Number, tips. Two tips. First thing, you gotta learn how to rap on the music. A lot of times people just put the music and start like saying words, but okay. there's, a, there, there's something to it. You have to rap on the beat, but the timing and everything has to be right. You have to- start. Rap on the beat. I'm writing this down. What you're doing, your voice has to be another instrument added to the beat, you know? So it has to match the beat, okay? Okay. And about the writing part of it, and a lot of times people start like rhyming, let's say like in Farsi, in Misa Migam, uh, uh, 
ولی تو توی کجا مثلا خب خب کجا و بالا دن اون رایم یافت میک شور دت لایک هم وزنش هم قافیهش یکی باشه باشه هفت سه دست بارین فارسی تو تو میک سنس اند سو میک شور دت ایوری لتر ایوری ایوری واو میچز د واو اف دی ادر دی رایم دت یو گیوینگ اند دن دی نیکست لاین بیس اوکی اوکی لیت می ترای اوکی سو من دارم انترویو میکنم بعدن غذا میخورم. That's good. That's good. <laughs> First draft. من دارم انترویو میکنم. بعدش میخوام فیلم ببینم. You know they're like dude just because. Okay. But then nobody's gonna buy my album. Nobody. <laughs> well, it also supports you. Oh yeah. So that's 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 good tip. So rap on the beat. So anybody watching, if you guys don't have rhythm, that <laughs> I don't know what to love? say. What you love? Do you um do you rap in any other languages? I do Hindi. No, I'm joking. I rap in um English <laughs> too. I write in English a lot. English is actually it's actually easier language to write in um for music. Like it's easier to rhyme, you know, at least for rap, you know. But um. I write in English a lot. I've never put out any English songs. I've written stuff for other people. I have a bunch of English songs that I haven't recorded and I just keep procrastinating. And because I'm so focused and so busy with the rest of my life, but it's something in the back of my head that I'm like, I have to do it just to prove it to myself. And um, that, you know. That's I, really cool. Yeah. You ever think you'll put out an English song? I will, for sure. I definitely I will. Um, it was supposed to happen already, but again, uh, it gets pushed back because it's like, not on top of my list of priorities because I have so much going on, but um, I definitely will. Yeah, and you have so many albums. I know, um, I'm sure you've gotten this question so many times, but you ended your career. You ended it in 2016 with the album Koda Hafez. Mm -hmm. And then you returned in 2018 um, with the album Koshu Madam, right? And Koshu Madi, yeah. Koshu Madi, my Farsi. Um, did you know that you were gonna come back uh or was it just like a publicity stunt no, it was not a publicity stunt i mean i was hoping that one day i could come back but i wasn't sure if it will like it was just it was a state of mind now it sounds crazy to me i'm like what do you what, what were you thinking right but at the time i was going through big life changes um i was in this uh, really serious relationship i was living in dubai and uh i was kind of struggling with writing songs and I just, the passion wasn't there because um, I had some primal needs that like weren't getting taken care of because of industry and money, financial, there's so many different things happening in my life. And I knew that if I want to have a fresh new start, I have to say bye to music because in my twenties, that was a struggle, the, all of my twenties that I, for a while I would work and I would be successful and I make you know, good money. And then I would come and focus on music. And when you focus on music, I couldn't focus on work as well, you know? So then I would spend the money that, that I would make on music and on everything. And just, I would make less money. And then I would come back to work. And I, so it was always a back and forth. So I knew that if I wanted a fresh start and I wanted to be successful and I wanted to do it, uh, you know, fast, I have to say bye to music. And uh, so that's what, one of the reasons there were some personal issues. So I stopped doing music and for two years, I kind of became really depressed and I kept thinking about it. And towards the end, I'm just, I can't do this, you know? And it was, I'm happy it happened because it helped me realize and remember what music meant to me and why I started and um, how there's no way I could ever like put it aside for the rest of my life. So I came back with a new passion and I had this internal revolution and I just started writing like crazy. And there was a point that my, when I came back after Khoda Fezi, my producer, uh, Dara, There was a point that he was he would sing music and beats every day and I would make a new song every day, you know. And so that summer, I think I made over 60 songs and it was nuts. Right. When yeah. you got back in 2018. Yeah. 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 Since then, been yeah. I have like over 80, probably over 80 unrecorded songs right now. They're done. They're just, I don't know which one to record and which one. Wow. To record. So just, Sometimes yeah. you just have to take that creative break. Your, your, your mind was working just overload yeah. for the exactly. past 10 years so you walk away you pulled the dave Chappelle. you dropped <laughs> everything i'm glad i was with most people i was so i mean I, i was worried sorry to cut you off by the way no you're, you're good um because most doing a comeback is one of the most difficult things for an artist and like i think 99 of people can't do it so i'm just i feel lucky and blessed that the passion came back and i did it you know yeah 
did it with a bank. I love it. Cause I was like, Oh, that's interesting, but it's good. It was a good little break. And you, what did you do in the two years? Did you do like something completely different? Did you pick up like pottery? What did you do? Yeah, I was making pottery. I was making toys. No, I'm kidding. I came back to um, America 2014. That's when I stopped music. I put that album, Pro Da Fizzy. And um, I was already doing real estate in Dubai, but it was a new life and I had to focus. And I knew it's not a real estate take years to uh, become successful and to like get to learn the business, not even you know, forget the success thing, but just to learn it, everything about it. Um, it takes a lot of time and I wanted to do it as fast as possible. So I put all of my focus on that and I joined a really good team in LA and I was just like doing everything, all kinds of research that I could do, spending a lot of hours working. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what I was doing until then eventually. Music well, came. I don't know about you, but I, I would make sure that my real estate agent was Airfon. I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> Airfon? Airfon's a real estate agent? I need hit, I need to buy my house from Airfon. I mean, you're a star. You know, you have so many. How does it feel to have such a large following? You know, you're an inspiration to Iranians all, all around the world and, and the Iranians in Iran, you know? Yeah. It's, so, it's such a, a great feeling. I'm, I'm sure for them, you, you, they look up to you, right? A lot of the youth. They do. Uh, I mean, and it's a blessing. I truly, the two biggest rewards that I get from music is one, uh, is uh, number one is concerts when I do live shows and I get to see my audience like face to face because I can't go back to Iran. So especially some mm -hmm. shows when I do in certain cities around the world that they're all like students and people who came recently from Iran or people who are there temporarily and are going back to Iran. It's just like, you know, you get, it's like, you know, you get to see these people up close and personal and they see them, they know your songs by heart, something that I wrote in my room like six years ago. All these people know by heart, they're singing. It's just, it's a crazy feeling. So that's the most rewarding thing uh, in music. And then also some messages that I get because um, I try to be positive in my songs and kind of uh, have that belief, if, if, if like have the belief in what you, in yourself and what you love and you'll reach your dreams. I try to do that. And when I see that affect somebody and I get mess messages from people that like, oh, I wanted to do this and I was afraid my family was against it, but I did it and I'm so happy right now and I found success in it. And you know, those are the two most rewarding things. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. And you were talking about touring, right? I know you tour all over the world. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memorable cities or shows, something crazy that happens? Because I'm sure you do and we'd love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. I mean. I'll, it's like two separate questions to me, so I'll answer both. Sure. Answer my, uh, some of my favorite cities are like, I love uh, Toronto in general, I love, and I also really like um, uh, cities. Like I did a show in Moscow, really it's much smaller crowd than usual. I did a show in Budapest, again, smaller crowd than usual. But that was actually a pretty big crowd, but Moscow was a pretty small crowd, but it just it felt great because... Again, these, pe these people, they had just came from Iran in the past, you know, maybe two months ago, six months before that. And um, somewhere like Moscow, no one really puts shows on. Iranians don't go there because there's not, big, uh, there's not much financial return for them. So it doesn't make sense. So they were just so happy that someone's there, someone there. Like, and and, and I, is it really connected with them after the show. I, I talked to everybody, took pictures with a bunch of people. And um, it just, I don't know, it fills you with love. It fills you with, like, it just makes me very happy. Um, so that's that, but the crazy story, I had a Istanbul, my, I think it was my, my last show in Istanbul, it was October 18th, 2019. So a fan jumped on stage in the, during my performance, she had a box in her hand and I'm like, okay, and the security wanted to throw her out, out of stage. I'm like, no, it's a fan. She's came all the way from Iran and she has a gift for me. I'm like, okay, let's see what it is. That's no, okay. I told him to back off and she came and she gave me the, the she opened, <laughs> I opened the box and there's two gold rings in there. What? There's two gold rings in there. And this is all, by the way, I have the video. I should have sent it to you guys. So I open it and then I'm like, oh, I'm just getting proposed to, to everybody. Uh, the guys, I'm getting engaged as a joke and the crowd's laughing, they're like, what's going on? So I take the ring, I put it on and she she put her ring on and she looks at me. I'm like, okay, cool, like, let's get She's like, she looked at me in my eyes, she's like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> she's like i'm not going anywhere i'm like what are you talking about and then she's hugging me like really hard i'm like okay everybody i'm trying like you know <laughs> keep things together keep the show rolling the show must go on 
So, uh, and then so security comes and they had to drag her off stage. She wouldn't leave. Um, and I thought it ended there after the show. We leave, uh, we leave from a separate en- uh, exit from the back door. And as I'm about to exit, like it was 4 a.m., maybe 4.30 a.m. I was so tired. I just t- took a bunch of pictures with everybody. And I'd been sick for a th- few days before that. No energy. Right. I'm leaving from the back door. And they're like, oh, she's there. Don't go out. She's there. I'm like, what do you mean she's there? What do you like? What am, am I supposed to do something about it? Are you guys not going to do anything about this? What am I supposed to do? So they're like, no, we got a taxi. Just go out and jump in the van. I'm like, okay. So I get in the van and she's like walking, giving me the eye from like, like on the side of the van. Like, you know, like, you know, she's like, okay, like I see how it is. You know? And so the van starts moving and we move and she gets in a taxi with the lights off, like in a James Bond movie. So it's like following us. I'm like, tell them the taxi driver, dude, we need to get the hell out of here. And like, you know, lose her. So he goes into some side streets, we lose them, we get back to the hotel. I go in the lobby and with my friends, there's like 15 of us. We, as, as we're getting to the elevators, they're like, she's back, she's back, they're me up. And we look back and she's just walking right towards me, you know? She comes and everybody's telling her, like, can you back off? And I'm like, everybody kind of like, actually everybody kind of leaves me. <laughs> I'm like, where's everybody going? Where are you guys going? And then in the, so my friend started saying, like, what are you doing? He just said that he doesn't want to talk to you. You guys aren't engaged. He doesn't know you. Why are you acting weird? Just, like, let it go. And she's, like, very calm. And she's, like, uh, I'm speaking with him. I'd appreciate it if you guys wouldn't interrupt and, like, stay out of this. It's between me and him. Like, uh, like very calmly. <laughs> so, anyways, at that point, she gets in the elevator. And she tries to get in the elevator. And she's, like, but you promised me. You promised me. I'm, like, what did I promise you? I don't know you. I've never met you before, you know? And, um... But anyway, um, and I, I wanted to be kind because she's like giving me love, obviously, right? So I'm not, I'm just trying to be as kind as possible and help her understand that maybe I don't know what happened. I don't know why, you, why you're acting this way. But um, she wasn't really buying it. And she's like, I see how it is. Like, I'll see you again, you know? And then she left. And yeah, so that's the story. She you never it. saw her again? I never saw her again, but my friends leaving the hotel 5, 6 a.m. said that she was walking around the hotel like she was still out there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, that was actually my sister. So <laughs> Look, I've been looking for a number actually. I just wanted I was trying to be cool in front of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My this is between me and him. I mean, your friends did not have your back. <laughs> your friends we, we, we were like shocked. We were like all like um you know, it was, it was it's not a normal thing and it's never and it's not something I'd experienced before. My manager, he was trying to like handle things and um, anyways, it was just like a, I'm surprised that hasn't happened to you more. You're a heartthrob. I'm surprised that every night somebody's not throwing their panties at you. You know what I mean? Like Erfan, I, I love you. I boy, boy, boy. Um <laughs> Just a reminder to everybody that's watching, please send us your questions right here in the Q&A. And we're going to have a, a few minutes to uh, go over any questions that you want to ask Erfan. Um, oh, OK. So I want to ask you some fun questions, Erfan. OK, so here's some like, you know, chill questions for you. What's your sign? You know what I mean? For all the ladies listening. I'm a What's Leo. your sign? Ladies. Yeah, I'm a Leo. What are you? Leo. Oh, you're a Leo. When's your birthday? August 3rd. August 3rd. So it's coming up. Tavalo de Mubarak in like a month. Yes. August 3rd. Um, when are you getting married? When? August yeah. 4th. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. You're getting married the day after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure you keep them separate. But um, um, I don't know. I definitely want to get married. I think it's that's a that's the best way I can answer a question. Yeah. And I definitely do want to have kids and I want to have a family. I've always wanted to have kids. When I was like 15, I thought I'd definitely have kids and family by 27. Uh, none of my friends were thinking about marriage then, but I was. But um, I don't know. Hopefully one day. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen one day. Do you, um, can you cook? Yes, I love cooking. I love cooking for my friends. Uh, it's always usually my job wherever I am. I have to ask, like, what can you cook? We I come over to Erfan's house. I'm, I'm not what trying to be like, you know, I'm trying to, like, I'm not trying to be like uh, cocky about it. But like, honestly, anything that I make, even the first time comes out good. I just like, because my mom, she has a Turkish background. She's Azadi. She was an excellent cook. So growing up, we always had amazing food in my family. Um, I know everybody thinks their mom's the best cook in the world. But like my mom, <laughs> actually, everybody else says it, said it too. Um, so after I moved in, I've been living alone since I was 17. So I had to learn because I couldn't have, you know, I wanted to have good food and things I grew up eating. So I really got into cooking and there was a lot of things that I learned at home, um, just helping. 
And um, so anyways, uh, yeah, I, I can make anything. Okay. What's your favorite Persian dish? dish it's a very uncommon dish. Uh, I love oh. it. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's my favorite thing in the world. Okay. That's a very uncommon one. You're right. Okay. I didn't know that one. Okay. A couple more. Uh, what's your favorite Persian word since you write so many lyrics? Persian word. That's like, you know, it's like asking... I don't know the jungle. What's your favorite tree in the jungle? It's very difficult because I, I play with words and that's what I do. I don't think I have one. You don't have one. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite word that you're like, oh, I hate <laughs> saying this word. Like a lot of people don't like the word moist. Do you moist. Have a least favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> Some people really like it, but um, uh, about um, there's a slang word that people use a lot right now and like uh, the younger people and I I really hate it. Nomusa. I hate that. They're like no no musan oh like no like, i just like hate, hate it when people use that it gets used a lot. yeah sorry yeah. what does it mean again sorry no musan like you know what no mus means we have to get into a whole like thing right now okay Adios, <laughs> like on everything that's the thing like if they're like no musan if they're asking a question about like on everything like for real that's kind of what it means uh -huh, but, uh -huh. yeah, the word okay that's well, what well, that's what it implies but the, the word meaning is something else Got it. No, I'm sad. Don't say that in front of Airfon. It's yeah. annoying slang. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, do you have a favorite, uh, like, ultimate favorite song? That's another tough one. I could never answer this question. I mean, I could tell you because I pretty much every Tupac song. I love like Nas, One Love. I love Metallica, Fade to Black. I like the Sephardi, Homoyin Shajar Yon Koli. That's one of my favorite songs. I like. Um, Three Libras from the Perfect Circle. I like Creep by Radiohead. Anyways, I, you asked for one song, but I gave you a bunch. That's you fine. Uh, we, like to, we like to know what's on your playlist. So yeah. we just got to know that. What, what are you watching on Netflix right now? I'm watching Unorthodox. Actually, I just uh, almost done with it. It's a great show. I finished it. Did you? Don't tell me. <laughs> <what>. <laughs> I'll say one thing. The acting is phenomenal. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Very great. You know, I'd watch the, just to jump in, I'd watch the documentary about someone, um, kind of similar life story of, of a girl. And so I've seen a documentary now that I saw it, like, uh, I think maybe the book was based on that girl's life. And, you know, so it was, it was very touching, great acting, as you said, great show. Love it, love it. Let's see, other questions. Uh, we can ask, here are some questions from, let's see. Oh, oh, we have some questions for you. Boy, boy, boy. Alex is asking, who is your favorite Iranian rapper? My favorite Iranian rapper would be Ali Jidar. Okay. Do you have a favorite song? Or do you want to have you have collaborated? Sorry. Yeah, the song is called Man of I love that song. It's from, from his older songs. Um, this is new song. It's, it's crazy. He's, he's my boy, and like he's, he's, he's one of the artists on my label. And Omesa uh, Tehran. That's another song that he recently put out. I love that song. You just like, yeah. Nice. Um, Melina is asking if you have any plans to work with uh, Zed Bozzi. No, I don't really have any plans to work with anybody. Um, I have some works in the, pro in, in the process, but no, not really. Mm -hmm. Do you have any upcoming projects we should know about? I have many. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, I have an album coming out with Dara, my producer. It's, it's our... Uh, it's our album. It's called Angiza. It should it should come in about a month or so. Um, then I have my own album that's coming probably in like seven eight months. Um, completely different vibe than what I've been doing the past few years. It's, 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 it's um, the subject of life and death is what I really get into. Um, and I have a few singles here and there. I have some stuff with Atusa, Madgal, and Jidal coming out this summer. And you know some music videos, different stuff. Yeah. And, and I'm working on a I have a clothing line, as you mentioned. So we have a site called Kucha, which is launching in the next week or 10 days. Uh, we're gathering. We have a few different Iranian designers that I really like their work. Uh, you'll be able to purchase them on Kucha worldwide, everywhere, except everywhere outside of Iran. And um, yeah, these are like the main projects I'm working on. Right now. That's a lot of projects. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. Oh, here's a question from Jasmine. Are you dating anyone right now? Yes, I am. Yeah? Yeah. Should we hunt her down? <laughs> <laughs> right. is, is she cooking for you or are you cooking for her? 
I'll probably do it more often, but because because I want to, you know, not because like uh, yeah. I'm like thing, like you know, because I'm like I want to do, it. I want to make sure I do it right, you know. <laughs> yeah, is I she in some? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, she's sorry. a good question. Yeah. Uh, is she in the music industry like you? No. No. There's 20 questions about her. <laughs> There's a million questions. Are you single? Do you prefer do you, do you, do you prefer to date Iranian or does it any other uh, ethnicity? What's your preference? No, I just, I, there's this uh, level of comfort and like um, uh, that you have with Iranians, like, you know, the background, the cultural stuff like that. But no, I'm not picky like that. Um, I have like, there's one girl I would date not right now, but if I was single, for, and you know, Ana de Arma, she's probably my celebrity crush. I really like her. I don't know if you know who, she, who that is, but like, um, she's an actress. Yeah. Okay. Google you can somebody like her. Celebrity crush. See, we got the crush. Uh huh. Mohammed is asking, how do you feel about Spotify or streaming platforms and how they support artists? It's good. I mean, they always like any, they always take more of a share than they should from the artist. But um, I think it's better. I think especially us as independent artists, that's one of the platforms that we could use to get our music out there and get paid. And we see a big shift in the Iranian music industry right now. They're kind of more dependent on the websites before, but now. People are selling music, uh, kind of like Pish Vurush Mikonan, they pre sale the albums and projects and stuff like that, which, which, which is really good. And platforms like Spotify are great too. Mm -hmm. And that's where people can um, get your music too, Spotify and iTunes, right? Yeah, except my first album's not on Spotify right now. We're having a battle. Okay. Yeah. Is it on iTunes? It's not, it's crazy. It just really like, pisses me off. But what happened was, I have a song called Bia Bia, one of my first songs that came out. And Lil John has a song named Bia Bia that I don't know, like Bia Bia is a Farsi word, obviously, Farsi term. I don't know why he named his song Bia Bia, but they told me it's copyright infringement on his song when my song came out before him and it's Farsi. And then like I had to get lawyers and I have to get like, anyway, so that's the drama right now. It's, it's crazy. So they just took the whole album out? With anything. They just, I got an email. I got an email. They're like, yeah, uh, how do you respond to this? Uh, there's a copyright infringement from like Lil John's lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is my song. I gave him the best explanation that I could. It's a you know, long email. They're like, yeah, um, unfortunately, we're gonna remove your album. Like, oh, oh no. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe you can message Erfan personally and he'll send you the Bia Bia album. Okay. <laughs> you get on Radio Javon if you want. Oh, Radio Javon, there you go. What do you think about TikTok? Because I, I've been seeing a lot of musical artists are getting their music, I don't know. Um, really I downloaded it. I deleted it like an hour later. I was like, what's going yeah. on? I don't get, I don't get it. And, um, but yeah, a lot of people do use it. And it's the, um, one of my artists on my label, uh, my little bro, Iman, he, he's, he has a TikTok and kind of does stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but again, I don't like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> well, not, not about, not about making the videos, like the artist just putting their music on there. On TikTok. Again, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about it. Like I've been, uh, I probably yeah. should know more about it, but no, I don't I've used it. Just another one of these platforms. Yeah. Um, ooh, Arash has a great question. What is your favorite song you have made? That's again very, very difficult question. But I could tell you I like Enekas a lot. I like Montazer a lot. I like Khodafezi a lot. I like um um I like Yechi Vanisha. It's like one of the, my newer songs. I love. I like that song a lot. It's one of my favorite things I've ever written. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So we have um, a few more minutes. Um, would there be any way um, you would like to do any short rap for us? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. I'd really love to, but I don't have anything like pre prepared and memorized right now. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I would want to do a kind of newer song and I haven't any shows in two, three months. So I haven't practiced. So I don't want to like, you know, I like to give people what they deserve and I, I'm not able to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions we can answer. Do you have any um, um, plans on going to Melbourne or any, any traveling soon as well? I do, I do. We were in talks for a concert in Sydney and Melbourne uh, through my management and then this whole, uh, Corona thing happened. We were kind of trying to date it, I think, for the end of summer, September, if I'm not mistaken. And um, this happened and everything, everything got postponed and put on hold. So I'll come, but I just don't know why. 
Yeah. Hopefully when this, all of this ends, what is the first thing you are going to do after this quarantine? Like the number one thing you want to do? Travel. Travel. Yes, me too. Love What's the travel. first place you want to go? So I really want to go to Japan. That's on the list, but realistically, because I do have to do some stuff for work too. So I go to Turkey and uh, Spain is on the menu. So those, those, those are my Turkey and Spain. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, one more question. Oh, how much uh, do Iranian poets like Hafez uh, influence you on your rhymes? A uh, lot of Iranian poets have, but Hafez is amazing. I mean, he's, he's known widely to be the best. Between him and Rumi, some people argue. My favorite is Omar Khayyam, but uh, as far as influence, uh, Rumi and Khayyam and Sadi probably had more influence, those three, on my music. Um, on me, I, would, I should say. Beautiful. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for answering all of these fun questions. It was a pleasure getting to know you more. Thank you to everybody around the world that has tuned in. This is Farhang Foundation's first Farhang Connect. Uh, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Ali Reza John, for monitoring this. Thank you so much, Erfan John, for being a part of this. And everybody, please stay safe. Uh, and hopefully soon we will all be able to travel and see each other. My pleasure. Thanks everyone yes. for joining in. Thank you for having foundation. Thank you, Melissa. Till next time. Thank Thanks, you everyone bye. for joining us. I have to thank Erfan Aziz and Melissa for uh, joining us for this first Farhang Connect. We're going to have a mini series of Farhang Connects coming up, so stay tuned to Farhang's platform and uh, let your friends who weren't able to join today know that we will have this video on our YouTube channel as well as on our um, Instagram channel and on our Facebook channel. So thank you again. It was a pleasure having you both here. Merci, Erfan John, for taking the time to be with us. Thank and you. until next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Zolera, botera, golera. Hatta mo nemi dunang galdo mo nemi konan tajo ma bokonan in ash oro.